Hi, everyone. Oh, am I live there? There we go. Perfect. Good to see you guys again. Sorry I'm a little late today. It has been a crazy day. I've literally been running behind most of the day. So such it is um, here now. So I really wanted to speak to a few different things regarding blood sugars. It seems to be a topic of uh, of interest with many people I've been speaking to the last few days. So I thought I'd just keep the conversation going. Um, in particular, what can cause elevations in blood sugars outside of the food that you're consuming? Now, obviously food is the biggest driver of elevations in blood glucose or your blood sugars. And we need to take that into context with other things. So when we eat certain foods, we might see a higher elevations when these other things are involved, um, such as stress, right? So if we've not eaten and we're in a fasted state, we may not see such a rise in our blood sugars as we would if we have eaten, eaten something. And then we have to think about, oh, we ate a cookie when we were stressed, we see higher blood sugars than maybe if we'd have eaten a cucumber. <laughs> it's just throwing that out there. So, um, and I think some of you have may have heard me say this already that I have actually had interesting results with watching a movie uh, that was very stressful, um, more so than I realized, went to sleep, hadn't eaten in three or four hours, and my blood sugars continued to rise because I'm wearing a CGM. Over the course of the next three hours, I woke up from a very um, disturbing dream. Blood sugars precipitously dropped. So I've uh, now taken caution in what I'm eat, what am I allowing myself to see and put into my brain, especially as I get to later in the evening. Um, you know, do I, I do love war movies and crime movies, but are those probably the, not the best thing for me? So anyway, I'm just throwing that out there for you guys to consider stress. Um, it causes the hormones of like cortisol and adrenaline to be released and it can make the body more re resistant to insulin, which can lead to elevated blood sugars. Now, these hormones are actually very important, right? You need cortisol. You would die without it. Uh, you need adrenaline. But again, um, in the context of the world that we live in, it's so easily to be stressed because we could be getting emails. We're constantly being bombarded by information. There's so little time to just sit back and think and reflect and be grateful for the moments that you're in because there's always someone grabbing your attention like me doing these lives. But I hope that these aren't stressful. Um, another thing to consider is illness. Um, really fascinating stuff. So I had a patient who had diabetes, pretty well controlled with diet. But whenever she developed a UTI, her blood sugars would shoot up to 300s before she even had symptoms. And it was really fascinating. Like she literally could call me and 24 to 48 hours later, if we didn't do anything, we're like, let's just make sure that's what's going on. She would start to have UTI symptoms. But we, when she started seeing the blood sugar elevate, we had immediately order a urinalysis. Sure enough, it's showing infection and we'd have to treat it appropriately. So illness, uh, COVID, colds, um, even injections like a vaccine, you can see an elevation in blood sugar secondary to the stress that the body's undergoing to fight the illness. So again, just some things to be mindful of. Certain medications can also cause an elevation in blood sugars. Statins in some people, although I haven't seen it a lot, but I've certainly have seen it on occasion. Diuretics, beta blockers, um, some antipsychotic medications, and obviously steroids like prednisone and things like that. So um, if you have diabetes and let's say you go in to get an injection in your shoulder or your knee, um, you need to let them know that you do have diabetes and make, you know, discuss with your doctor who's ever managing your blood sugars make appropriate plans to, to deal with that. Cause I've seen, depending on the injection, um, blood sugars remain elevated for several weeks, um, after that. So just something to be uh, mindful of. Um, and then hormonal changes, right? So it's not uncommon that I've seen some women find that they are become more insulin resistant during uh, certain periods of uh, certain times during their period or their menstrual cycles, uh, PCOS can cause an elevation, um, and have an impact. Pregnancy can cause um, some changes and you may see some more insulin resistance or elevated blood sugars. So, um, again, not that these things are bad in and of themselves, you know, as far as, well, of course, PCOS, we don't want, but pregnancy and having periods. I mean, these are just things that we deal with, 
Um, but just to be mindful. And I think there's probably some genetic predisposition that leads to certain things happening for certain people. Um, and then I think the uh, one that I think we're becoming more aware of and really trying to be more mindful of is our sleep, right? Um, I love the whoop. I am not being paid by the whoop, but I will tell you, I wear the whoop at night. I was wearing it all day too, but it was just between the the watch and the CDM. I was like, okay, it's going to have to set the whoop aside. I use it only probably for sleep anyway. And it's really interesting because it's making me more mindful of my bedtime, making sure that I do everything I can to get better restorative sleep, especially when um, with exercise as I'm building mileage with running. Um, and then I can correlate that with blood sugars and food and yeah, it's just some fascinating data. So I like the data. I like to, you know, experiment on myself. So, so poor sleep can absolutely affect your blood sugars. If you have a negative sleep issue, or excuse me, if you have a poor night's of sleep, it can have negative impact on your blood sugars the next day. You may see an elevation just in your starting blood sugars. Your stress is higher because you're not rested and you can't deal with maybe things that would have just, you know, not been such a big deal for you, but other stressors like dealing with someone who's more difficult at work or getting a difficult email or just even just traffic uh, sitting on the road. Um, you know, all these things that we internalize and just respond to or more emotionally reactive, you will see an elevation in blood sugars that way. Um, and again, I just wanted to speak also just to um, injury might do that, um, but also the steroid injections. And I, I think that can be really something you need to pay attention to because I do know uh, a lot of my patients tend to be a little older and um, will come back and they're like, oh my goodness, my blood sugars are high. I was like, did they not talk to you about this? <laughs> so just be mindful of it. That can do that. So uh, again, so let me just go over a few different things, uh, stress, illness, medications, um, hormonal changes, poor sleep, and um, in a few people, by the way, alcohol, not everyone, but um, alcohol can raise blood sugars. And it can raise your triglycerides, which make you more insulin resistant. Anyway, not a fan of alcohol. Um, steroid injections, injury, um, and those are on my list. So hope that was helpful. Um, I will be back tomorrow with some other topic. I'm not sure yet. I will set it out there that I hope this uh, reaches whoever needs it needs to reach. So again, I hope this was helpful. You guys have a rest, a blessed evening, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow.